This is Bruno and Faye again. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, we're Bruno and Faye and we just started skating about two months ago. In the recent conversation, a few people told us that it would be really helpful if we made a video about how we managed to skate on a very tight budget. Please don't, oh, please don't subscribe. <laughs> I was gonna say, don't forget. <laughs> I was like, please don't subscribe to us. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel to keep up with our videos. Don't forget we release videos every Thursday. Like the video too if you liked it. Plus click the bell button. It it's helps. always good. It's like a big plus to Karma. If you're looking to skate on the budget and if the budget is tight, you have to really get smart about what you want to invest in and where you want to save. There are several general areas where you can save when you're budgeting for your ice skating. The first area is the actual training and ice time. If you tried skating before, you know that ice time and training can get pretty expensive. The prices are usually different depending on the ring, but they all have one thing in common. Over time, they do add up. If you're just starting out, the really good way to save is to sign up for group classes or for a learn to skate program. It's usually way cheaper than paying for private coach and paying for the ice time. Our ring, for example, has classes and practice time during public skate sessions included in it. So we found it was a big saving. And bonus thing, you get to make lots of friends just by meeting people in your class. For your practice time, it's generally cheaper to pay for public skate sessions than to pay for free skate sessions that are meant for actual figure skaters to practice their element. Now, obviously, it comes with its own cons. Public skate time is where everybody goes to skate, from very beginners to just people having fun, celebrating birthdays, sometimes, going on a date. Sometimes there's disco lights going on. That happens also. <laughs> So if you go that route, you have to get really smart about picking your times. We go several times a week and luckily for us, we're on a pretty flexible schedule. So we can afford to go during the daytime, during the week. Absolutely nobody goes public skating on Monday afternoons. For some reason, Monday is the best day. There's always like barely anyone, pretty much just us in the ring. Literally, we get free skate conditions on the public skate price. If you're on a really tight budget, but still looking to skate and trying to figure out how to afford your ice time, the very first thing to consider is talk to your rink. Talk to your rink manager, talk to the staff manager and see if there's some kind of arrangement that can be made. There could be anything from buying a package instead of paying for a single class to get an overall discount to volunteering options possibly and options to maybe trade some work around the facility for some ice time. We can't really tell you if your particular ring has the option or not, so best thing you can do is just ask. If you do feel like private coaching is the only way for you and you really do not do well in group classes, there is a way to make that cheaper as well. Normally, if it's just you and the coach, you pay full price for a private lesson. However, you can always share a private lesson with another student or even several, which cuts the price quite significantly. Three people is a sweet spot. If you already made some friends at the ring, try to talk to them, see if they might want to share a private lesson with you. However, even if you absolutely do not know anybody, talk to your coach. Because chances are, your coach probably knows another poor soul who is looking to share a private lesson. If you're a really organized person, a great way to save on your coaching fees is learn by yourself. Now, this process is obviously way, way slower than taking proper training from a professional coach. You know, that's why they have those. But if you're in no rush to make the next Olympics and you still have some time, consider learning from other sources. Look up some cool tutorials here on YouTube. There are a lot of people posting exercises. Join skating groups on Facebook, create an Instagram and follow other skaters. People love to share information and they love to help. We find so many cool exercises and so many cool tutorials on those channels. 
You can also always ask for advice or post a video of yourself of something that might not be working or just something that you're working on and ask other people for feedback and for advice and I can guarantee you will always get it. Speaking of, make sure you follow our Instagrams. And most importantly, be organized. Maybe get yourself a notebook like this. Write down the things that you learn in class, the exercises that you did with a coach in your group class or in your private session. Write down the comments you got and the corrections you got. And then when you go and practice by yourself, you can take all the time you want to perfect those skills until you go to the next class. Classes are fast paced. So I feel like uh, the class gives you a lot of information, but then you don't have enough time to practice. So it's good to remember the notes and the big part of coaching is just creating the class program so if you already have that you can give a class to yourself same goes for your off-ice training there are plenty of helpful videos here on youtube like the sofa bar channel or coach michelle hong that provide some great exercises for you to work on your skills off ice that way you don't pay for ice time and you get to get better next time you skate. There are also plenty of great online programs that are paid but fairly cheap with regular classes with variety of coaches. Mm -hmm. We actually got invited to an X skate fit program with Shannon Rakowski. It's a five week training program. If you want to join us, we're going to put the link down in the description. So if you want to suffer through some hardcore off ice training with us, join. Which brings me to my last point of the section, trade skills. If you have some useful skill that you can offer to anybody on the ice. Like baking. <laughs> like <something>. baking. <laughs> Bring your cupcakes. Blacksmith, I don't know, something. In our case, we had offers to trade ice training for our dance training. That's just one example. If you're good at advertising, promoting, accounting, any kind of skill that you feel like may be useful for a coach that you want to work with, don't be scared and don't be shy to offer trades or to set up and start the conversations where you could trade your skills for the skills you're willing to receive. That's a great way to save money and everybody wins. So find out which cookies the, co the coach likes better. <laughs> it's good to know either way. <laughs> Next big area for savings is your skating equipment. So if you're just starting out, the very first thing I'm going to say that's going to blow your world is you do not actually need skates to skate. Many rinks provide rental skates and often they would be included with your first session. Now it's not a long-term solution. Once you start, you will soon want to transition to your own skates, but it's a great way to try it out and decide if you actually want to do this thing for real or not before you commit to buying some expensive equipment. You're going to decide fast though, before you fall. <laughs> when investing in equipment, you're going to be really smart on what you really need to invest in and what you cannot compromise on and the things where you can actually save. The one thing that you absolutely do not want to compromise on or go cheap on is your skates. Because skates are everything, they make a huge difference and it can be a difference between being able or not being able to do an element or even between being nice and stable on the ice and falling all over the place. If you're serious about your skating classes, if you really want to learn how to skate, we would definitely recommend to invest in proper training skates rather than hobby class. Do not buy skates at your general sports goods store. <laughs> don't buy them at Ross. I don't think they would I don't sell. Think sell them at Ross. <laughs> but if they would, don't buy them at Ross. Really research the topic and ask your coach, ask other students in your ring and see what kind of options are good. Try to stick to the brands that are made for professional skaters. Normally, I would say go to a pro shop, the actual shop that sells skating equipment specifically and ask for help there, especially if it's the first skates that you're buying. However, this video is about skating on the budget 
So there's a cheaper option, which is ordering your skates online. This is the route that we went and we made a whole video about it actually. It's literally called shopping for your first skates online on the budget. We're gonna put the link right here. So you learn everything about the skates. Now this route is a little longer, requires a little more research, but when you try to save money, you have to trade something else, right? Like pro shop, budget. I'm covering it. Sorry. Maybe ask your coach for help or for advice. That's what we did and it turned out just great for us. There are plenty of websites that you can order them from. We actually went with Amazon because it had the best deal for the ones that we wanted. Out of all the brands, we personally picked uh, Jackson's, which we thought was a great option for us as beginners, but that is also gonna last us for quite a while. If you wanna check out our specific skates and maybe get that same deal, we're gonna link them down in the description so you can see if that's right fit for you. If this is not your first rodeo, an additional option of getting cheaper skates is to buy pre-owned ones off eBay or websites like that, or just talk to people and talk to staff at your local ring. Oftentimes people would leave their old skates that they have changed for something else and ask the staff to help sell them. In addition to your skates, you will need blade guards and soakers. Soakers and blade guards are something you don't want to skip on because they protect your blades and they prevent them from getting rusty. It's definitely cheaper to mm -hmm. buy proper blade guards and put soakers on your skates when you store them than having to buy new blades. Yeah. That being said, that doesn't mean you have to spend $80 on a fancy idea gradient or color <laughs> gradient color Which blade actually covers. Very cool. <laughs> they're amazing oh my god if anybody <laughs> wants to give them to me because i can't afford them we just went for regular blade guards of amazon we're also going to link them down below if you want to check them out they were like 20 bucks per pair which yeah, is maybe cheap i think it was cheaper actually that makes a huge difference also because the blade guards really doesn't matter that much if they're fancy mm expensive kind or just cheap kind as long as they cover your blades and you can walk in them you're gonna be just fine you might not be the envy of all the skater girls in your rink but they do the job just fine just make sure you don't go nice to them <laughs> very true same goes for soccer's if you really want to splurge them to some cool plush toy looking ones awesome like scooby-doo if you want to stay on the budget our soakers were, I think it was $20 for a pack of two. So we just bought one pack and shared them between us. Mm -hmm. He got a pair, I got a pair and we're great. She kept the cool ones, I kept the not so cool ones. They're the same. So. Okay. And the last area where you can find some savings is your clothing and what you're wearing to the ring. And then I got some new Lulu gloves. You can never have enough gloves, guys. And then I got these Lulu shorts. I'm really excited for these because I love Lulu shorts and I wear them like every day. Now that part is a fairly easy compromise. First of all, if you want to save money, do not buy the special skating clothes. It's great if you're skating outside or if your rink is really cold because it's generally insulated or is kind of warmer type. However, usually the temperature in the rinks is just fine to wear your normal sweatpants or your normal leggings. You're also gonna sweat, so, so as you skate, it's gonna be even easier. There is also no need to hunt for fancy brands unless you, of course, you want to. <laughs> you absolutely do not need to have Lululemons or whatever fancy Adidas type of brands. The good old Target or old Navy leggings and pants, trust me, work just as fine and cost significantly less. You want to wear gloves for your skating most of the times to protect your hands and to make sure you stay nice and warm. However, if you try to shop for skating gloves specifically on skating websites or at a skating store, they kind of cost a pretty penny for whatever reason. We got our gloves at like H&M or something like that. One of the general stores and they're actually very good. <laughs> and they're the same actual gloves as we saw online in a skating store. They have all the same features. I can even operate a cell phone 
they're touch sensitive they have grips and everything you want and i spent like five dollars on yeah. there so guys we're hoping all of this was helpful and uh make sure you do your homework and uh see you next week with the next video bottom line is the more research you do the less money you spend homework homework <laughs>